This session will be recorded for future, future parent workshop use and posted on the Hartford County Public School Early Childhood Workshop site. By attending the session, you are agreeing on the terms of your participation to be recorded. Hi, my name is Carrie Sadowski and I work with infants and toddlers families. Today we're going to be talking about learning through daily activities. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. Things to keep in mind today that we learn by doing and the birth through five age range. Um, kids are always watching those around them. They're watching their parents, their grandparents, their caregivers, their siblings, friends, neighbors. Um, they're learning by watching us and we want to take it the next step further and involve them and have them learn by doing. Remember that learning is free. You don't have to pay for a fancy program or expensive games or toys. There are things that we do in everyday life that they are learning from and that's fun. And there are a lot of hidden lessons in those activities. I challenge you to focus on what your child can do and what they can't. Um, this is particularly for those parents who have real little ones um, and you're thinking that these are things that my child isn't able to do yet. Well, it's something that you can work toward. Looking at your child's abilities, what can they do now? And you kind of build those other things in. And also that would be for parents whose children have some developmental delays. Focus on what they can and go from there. Shopping for food. Um, I love a grocery store. There's so much to see and do there. Um, there's a lot that you can involve your child with. Don't feel like you have to do all of these things. Pick and choose, try different things. Um, my one recommendation is that pick a time that works best for you when you're not on a schedule and when the store is a little quiet. Um, if you feel any pressure, it's not going to be a fun experience for anybody. A lot of times I just want to get in and out of the store. But if you have the time and there's not a whole lot of people crowding you in, it's fun to try some of these things. My favorite section of the store is the produce section. There's so many colors and shapes and textures, things to see and talk about and identify. Um, try picking, um, having your child pick out some of the items. For example, especially if you have a picky eater, if they have a say in what's going to be on the meal, they kind of buy into it a little bit more. So say you're having meatloaf or chicken tonight, what's the side going to be? Do you want green beans or broccoli? Or do we want to try squash? Uh, bagging your produce. Um, just think of the fine motor skills of getting your bag and putting your apples or, or grapes in there, figuring out how it's going to fit in the bag, and then twisting and tying it um, when you're done. Following the lists. We don't expect kids to be um, reading a list at this point, but just an awareness that there's print and you've written something down and we can kind of follow along with our finger. Um, we've picked up our salad, so we need to buy some corn or look at apples. So you can kind of follow along. You can scratch off the stuff that you've already gotten. And if your kid's responsible enough to hold the list, have them go ahead and hold it and they can feel like they're in charge or responsible for them. Um, looking at prices, just an awareness of the numbers that, um, say for example, you're picking up the bananas. Oh look, the bananas are on sale. They're 29 cents a pound. How many bananas should we get? What about um, the cereal? We're looking at cereal boxes. This one's $2.99, this one's $3.50. Hmm, it's just getting them to focus on that things um, do cost money and just looking to see what the numbers are, talking about them. And then at checkout, putting the things on the conveyor belt. Think of the, the gross um, motor skills that they're doing for that, the fine motor, scanning, and then bagging. Farmer's market, local farmer's markets are starting to open up now. They're a great place to go um, to look at local produce and local items. And then also talking with the people that grow them if you have questions. And then Pick your own fruit, especially over the summer months. A lot of places and the area where you can go pick your own apples and peaches and berries. 
it's a great way for kids to see where their food is actually grown. Math in the kitchen. Um, keep in mind that math is more than just numbers, it's language. Um, for example, we have the eggs in the, in the bottom picture there. Say you're baking um, a cake or brownies from a box and you need two eggs. Are we going to have enough eggs? So you look and you count. Oh, look, we have seven eggs and you go through counting them. Do we have enough? Yes, we have enough eggs. Are we going to have leftover eggs? Will we have enough for tomorrow when we have breakfast? So talk about those concepts of more and less and counting. Um, creating your own recipes. Um, especially this is fun to do with your kids. Uh, talk through, it could be Sam's um, mac and cheese recipe, not sorry, Sam's um, peanut butter and jelly recipe. And what do we need? We need bread, we need peanut butter, we need jelly. How, what are we gonna do? We're gonna spread it on. Go through those steps and then you can go ahead and write everything down. That'll be their special recipe. Um, it's a great gift idea for grandma and grandpas. You can have the recipe. Um, you know, it's a fun activity. Also cutting your sandwich. Think about the shapes and the portion size. Talk about the timer that um, when something's going in the oven, it's gonna bake for 10 minutes. Let's set the timer. Whether you're saying the timer on the oven or maybe you're setting it on your phone. There's lots of great um, timers for kids out there. And then helping with meal prep. Rinsing, maybe it's rinsing your produce or tearing your lettuce leaves. There are a lot of things that kids can do in the kitchen um, as far as like recipes with no bake recipes. There's a lot online that you can find. And then finally, the meal planning for the days of the week. Your calendar and your days of the week fall under math. So think about what are we going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, go through the week as you kind of plan it out and you talk about the different days that you're doing. Toys and games. I'm not going to go through each of these. Um, I have next to them the things that they are working on, whether it is you're working on your language, you're following directions, uh, maybe you're working on math or turn taking. But I did want to highlight a couple. Uh, puzzles. I love puzzles. They um, they have because they have a very they have an end date, a finish a finish period. When the puzzle's done, it's over. You can choose to do it again, but you you can finish it and and do something else. Where I feel like with a lot of the board games, you're kind of stuck in this. You think you're close to the end, and then somebody rolls a certain number, and you are in this board game forever. Um, if you are running out of puzzles or certain games, think about the Harford County Public Library. They have a lot of things that you can check out um, and then you can return it and get another one. Simon says red light, green light, I spy and hokey pokey are great for going on the road. Um, I have done all of them in a doctor's office while we're waiting for a nurse or a doctor to come in. Um, and then the I spy with my little eye. So say you have a little one and you're thinking, how are we going to do I spy? How do I, I adapt this to a little one or someone who has some delays? So you can start small. You know, maybe there are three or four toys in front of your child and I spy with my little eye, something that's round and it bounces. It's a ball. Give them limit their choices to three or four, and then maybe add on as they get to it. Maybe add on to, you know, five or six. Maybe what's something that's right in their room or their field of vision. Um, and then you you move move on. Maybe it's something when you're taking a walk. Um, tailor to your child's age and their ability. Books beyond just reading the story. There are a couple other presentations um, that deal with reading, but I want to do things that were a little bit different from reading. So making up your own story using pictures. Say this is a book that you have read over and over and over again. What else can you do with it? Well, if they have great illustrations, you can create your own story for it. You can do it um, for your child or you can tag team it with your child and have them fill in the special blanks. Um, then what about talking about the text? 
talk about what they think might happen next. Um, what about the illustrations and how it relates to the story? For example, if it's a book on seasons, what's different about the tree as the tree goes from summer to fall? Maybe it's the growing season. They're talking about gardening and where we see carrots growing. And so the green top of the carrot, you see get bigger and bigger. Or how does the story relate to the child? Maybe there's something in the story that you can turn around and ask them a personal question. If it's a story about the beach, what do you like doing at the beach? Maybe it's going to grandma or grandpa's house. Make it something personal and you can jump off into a whole new conversation with them. Uh, and if the book has busy illustrations, play find the item. And it's really fine to turn it around. You know, we often ask children questions give them a chance to ask us the questions and they love being the one in charge. Household activities. They, um, the great thing about this age group is they want to do things. Not so much when they're teenagers, but at this age, they enjoy doing things that mom and dad and older people in the house are doing. It gives them a sense of accomplishment and a sense of responsibility. But more important, it gives them a sense of connection. We're not going to send a child off to have them do something and then come back when they're done. At this age, we're doing it with them. It's an activity that we're doing together. We are engaged together. You can talk about things. So scaffold the activity to match what your child can do. The example here is if your child's sweeping skills um, need some work, you know, have them hold the dustpan or maybe you're holding the dustpan and they're sweeping into it. Um, do what, um, with, focus on what they enjoy doing and what they're able to do. And then you can always pepper in things that they need to work on skill wise. Example of skills used when doing household activities. Talk about the loading or unloading the dishwasher. I hesitated a long time for my daughter to do this because I was always worried about knives or sharp things in my dishwasher or things that would break. And then it just occurred to me one day that why don't I just take those out? So as soon as my dishwasher was done, I'd open the door, I'd pull out all the things I didn't want her to touch or um, you know possibly break or injure herself with. And then it left the things that she could do, like pulling out the spoons and the forks and separating them and figuring out where they go. It works a lot of their fine and gross motor skills, figuring out how things fit in there, problem solving. Um, and then for the laundry, how do you sort your clothes? We're gonna sort the dark clothes from the light clothes, um, putting them in and then one of the things I've realized with my washer, it's a top load and it's very deep. I need to stand on my tiptoes to reach the bottom of it. So it would certainly be unsafe for my daughter to even attempt to find stuff out of there. So oftentimes what I'll do is I will lean over, I'll grit stuff and I'll kind of toss it behind me and she'll catch it and she'll shake it out and put it in the dryer. And then when we unload from the dryer, she'll pair the socks We'll figure out whose does this shirt belong to. Is it mom's or dad's or hers? We talk about the items. We practice folding it. There's a lot of things that you're working on in that process. Time spent in the car. If you're anything like me, we spend a lot of time going to different appointments and activities, certainly before uh, COVID. So if you're spending so much time in the car, there's gotta be some fun things you can do in there. Car sounds for beginner talkers. Think about like your turn signal goes or the roughing of the engine, the vroom, vroom. Have them give noises to the car as you're driving along. Identifying your signs, your stop means red. Um, just starting to look around at the signs, but around you, like if it's the, uh, the commercial signs, you know, Walmart, what is Walmart? You know, it's the big, they start to look at those signs and they know exactly what it is. Um, the one game that can become old quick is your backseat driver. That's the one sitting in the back saying, um, 
turn left, turn right. Uh, but I particularly like this as we got used to figuring out where we live. And it did work on left and right skills. As you're going down the road, the driveway's on the left. Our driveway's always on the left. So we're gonna turn left. Oh, look, here's our stop sign. We're going to stop. And then as we got a little bit closer, as we, as your child learns those things, you can expand the field out. Maybe it's as you get to your neighborhood, maybe if it's going from your favorite, um, favorite ice cream shop, how do we get home? Um, giving them, having them give you the directions on how you're gonna drive um, is, a, is a fun way to look, work on those left turns and right turns. Uh, make a game of it. Who can spot it first? This is great if you have um, other kids in the car. And then the, working on the concept of first and then. First we're going to the store, then we're going home, or first we need to go to the library, then we're going to go to the park. We didn't realize we were learning, we just knew we were having fun. So that really is the goal. We want kids to have fun and they learn when they're having fun. When they're having fun, they want to do something again. They, then they'll want to do it again. They'll want to repeat the activities and you learn by doing. So that's that's all we want kids to focus is on is what they're doing is the being fun and then we can focus on what they're learning in the process. Be sure to visit the Early Childhood webpage on the Harford County Public School website. It's www.harfordcountypublicschool.org. It's under the Parent tab. These are the other sessions that are coming up. Um, there, these sessions will all be recorded. So if you've missed out on one of these, feel free to um, look. They will be posted on the Early Childhood website so that you will be able to view them later. And also at the end of the day, there is a, an evaluation. Um, please fill it out. We want to know what worked for you, what didn't, and suggestions for the future. So, and I thank you for joining me. Again, my name is Carrie Sadowski. If you have any questions or if you have suggestions for me, maybe there is an activity that you thought of, or maybe there's an activity that your family does that would come into play. I love getting these ideas and then I can also share them with other families. So thank you.